Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing game development for complete beginner tutorial series. Today we are going to look at handling the keyboard using the Love Game Engine. Uh, now handling the keyboard is pretty consistent across almost every single game engine. There's two ways to go about it. One is polling it and the other one is event driven. And the kind of fundamental concept between the two is in polling, basically you're in a loop over and over again going, anything change? Did anything change? Did anything change? And if it says that something has, then your code go ahead and go, uh, goes ahead and responds to it. Whereas event driven kind of takes a different approach. What you do is you implement a callback function that is called when that event occurs. So it's kind of reversing the thing. So there the game engine says to you, hey, this just happened. Do you want to deal with it? And we're going to look at you using both of those approaches today in love. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, as always, very simple project we're going to start with. This is your main file. I'm just going to go ahead and create a very simple application that we're going to start with. Uh, we're going to need a pair of variables. Uh, we're just going to control a circle that we're going to move around on screen. So this is the circle's uh, coordinates, the locations for it. And in our load function, so when our application first starts up, like so, uh, we're just going to go ahead and, oops, there we go, uh, let's just set those coordinates. Uh, so circle x equals love.graphics.get uh, width. So we're just centering it to the middle of the screen. If I could type today. Like so. All right, so nothing new here. Uh, basically, so we're gonna be drawing a, a circle. We need the two coordinates to represent the position of said circle. And then finally, let's go ahead and actually draw that circle. So that's a matter of implementing the draw function. And inside of it, we simply go love.graphics.circle, uh, filled circle, like so, at circle. Okay, circle X, circle Y, I cannot spell today. Uh, 50 radius and 32 segments. Okay, so simple graphic stuff. If that makes no sense to you, just head on back to the graphics tutorial. Uh, you'll find exactly what we're doing here covered there. Again, all of these tutorials assume that you've gone through the prior part in the tutorial series. Uh, so if you need a bit of an update on what's going on here, just head on back and it will all make sense. Uh, but essentially, we're just drawing a circle in the middle of the screen. Uh, let's go ahead and run, make sure that our code is actually up and working. And there you see it is. So perfect. So now what we want to do is go ahead and implement um, keyboard handling. And the first thing I'm going to do is implement the WASD key. So uh, A, S, D, and W for moving left, right, up, and down. And in order to move around, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to uh, either increment or decrement these two values and nothing more. Uh, so in order to do this, first we're going to start with the polled approach. So this means we're going to ask the game engine if the key has been pressed or not. And the easiest way to do that is in the update method. Like so. Now, uh, the process is going to be pretty consistent. So if love, so you check your keyboard going love.keyboard, and there's a method called is down. And all you do is pass into it the key to check. So we're checking, is the A key down? Then uh, circle X equals circle X minus one. Like so. And what we're gonna do here is an else if. We could also do, we could do this as a series of ifs or else, and you know what? I'll do it as a series of ifs. It makes more sense because otherwise you can only handle one uh, event per update, and that's kind of stupid. So we'll go ahead and end that. So now through the beauty of cut and paste coding, all right, let's get rid of that guy. All right, so. A is left, D is right. So to do that, we simply want to increment instead of decrement. And then finally, we want our W and oh, S. All right, so basically we're just checking to see if the A, the D, the W, or the S key are pressed and modifying the appropriate variables if they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Oh, kaboom. Uh, attempt to index global. Uh, did I forget to put a, duh. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Okay, so now if I press the A key, you'll see, and I'm holding it down, and we're moving by one per frame. Same with up. 
Uh, same with right and same with down. So there you can see, so W, S, A, and D. Or we can press it one at a time and move by one unit per. So uh, pretty cool, that is keyboard handling via polling. Very quite simple. Now one thing to keep in mind, and this is one of those things I touched on in an earlier graphics tutorial, but it's worth reiterating. This approach by moving one per update ties you to the speed of the machine you're in. So what you would often wanna do is instead make this say, 100, so saying 100 pixels per second, and then simply multiplying it by DT. This will give you a normalized speed across all the machines you run at. Uh, so I'm giving you just sort of a lazy example by doing this uh, minus one or plus one stuff. So keep in mind, you wanna use that delta that's being passed into the update function in order to make it so that all applications run at the same speed, regardless to the computer that they're on. Okay, so that is polling. It's it's simple matter of just checking to love.isKeyDown and then passing in the key you wanna check. Now there is one thing that might be a little curious is what are these keys? Like what if we wanna check left or right, etc.? Well, we can get to those at uh, love2d.org forward slash wiki forward slash key constant. And there is the definition. So this is the string you're checking for and that is the corresponding key. So if you wanna check if the zero key is down, you pass in a zero. If you wanna check if the space bar is down, you pass in the word space. All right, so that is your various things. There are your different arrow keys, there are your function keys, etc. So if you need to know uh, the actual name of the key or the special application keys, etc., uh, they're all defined here in this handy little list in the, the wiki uh, for the Love2D under the uh, key constants. Uh, so important, if you need to figure out what to actually check for, it's pretty obvious for like A, B, C, D. Um, but once you start getting into a couple of these other ones, such as uh, the number pads or various other keys, page up, page down, etc., the defined string to check for, the value that you use uh, in this test right here is defined in that list. All right, so that is handling it via polling. That is to say, we ask Love what key was pressed and deal with it accordingly. Now let's just finally look at uh, dealing with it event driven. And this is done by handling yet another uh, callback function in our love code. In, in main.lua, we just add another function. So this function is love and it's dot uh, key pressed and it's passed in a key value. And now we can do pretty much the same logic. I'm only gonna do left and right here because I'm kind of lazy and you get the idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, so here we're just gonna check that key value and see what its value is. Now that key is going to be the same as that table we just looked at. So this is the value that is going to be passed in uh, when this event is called. So every time that key is pressed, it will call the key down function with the string name of the key that was pressed defined. Uh, so we're gonna check for left like so. Uh, we'll go ahead with a then. And so I guess that's circle x equals circle x minus one. And yeah, let me get back there. And we'll just do right. So right arrow key is pressed and a plus. So obviously you can handle whatever way you wanted to, like as many keys as you want to uh, deal with here. I'll go ahead and check that. And now left arrow and you will see I am moving left. Now you, I don't know if you can hear that. That's me furiously tapping the keyboard. Or if I go right, that is me furiously tapping the keyboard. In the event-driven approach, by default, you only get one key event per uh, keyboard event. That is, key press down and up will trigger one event. Now, if you wanna change this behavior, you can. So if you wanted to basically uh, fire multiple events if the key is held down, we can also do that. But we have to change one line of code. And, and it makes sense to do that in our uh, startup code here. So in um, love.load, we can just call love.keyboard.setKeyRepeat as true. So now when I go ahead and run it, if I hold down the left arrow, it fires multiple times. So I don't have to keep pressing and releasing the key for the event to trigger. Now which one you want is entirely up to the logic of your code. Um, and, and they're basically the equivalents. So, uh, but you will find that this behavior is pretty much how your pulled code. Uh, so when you set key repeat to true, your default code logic for it in 
if we poll like this, you're going to get the same behavior uh, for event driven if you set it for multiple is true. So, but which one you want to go with or which approach you take is 100% up to you. And realistically, that's about it. Keyboard handling is actually really simple. Uh, you've got the two approaches. If you want to poll versus um, if you want event driven, entirely up to you. Um, they're they're equally good. Uh, it all really comes down to what one makes the most sense in your particular code. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Bye.